blog started in uh, 1992. It all began with a uh, relationship that uh, was pretty stressed. Blog, my understanding, started out more or less as a, as a conflict, a, a concern in the area. I think the very first thing it did, it brought industry and community and the regulatory board together. Well, I think it's facilitated the conversation between community people and the industry and made us each aware of each other. We had to make a choice. Do we continue to go on fighting or can we take these differences and somehow work a different model and change the relationship into one where we can respect each other and uh, maybe resolve a lot of our differences. We had a, a communication workshop where we invited uh, everybody from the community and it was like a miracle. We said, okay, all these things have gone on, we can't change them, that's water under the bridge, but what do we want to do going forward? And it was a very positive experience. Uh, so in a half a day we came up with the vision of SPOG that, you know, what is it that people want? And what we all want is a long-term relationship built on mutual uh, trust, honesty, and respect by way of sharing pertinent information to resolve issues for all stakeholders. The big thing is that we had developed a synergistic approach where everybody has a chance to put their input in and listen and learn. Synergy, the movement, has been a really good fit with the regulatory mandate. And by doing that, we developed processes within SPOG and building processes and working with them, it gives you a way to track what you're doing, where things go wrong, and you can see what your outcomes are. It made it so that we could resolve issues. We could look at options to resolve those issues and build relationships with, with all participants. The different things SPOG has been involved with over the years. I currently chair the Community Affairs Committee in which the community and industry can come together with mutual understanding. One of the first things we did was uh, uh, Covey 7 habit training for everyone so we'd have common language and a, uh, common communication methods. And the first neighbors they start with about 150 people coming out and uh, you know we've had as much as 3,500 plus people come out to Neighbors Day. The Environment Committee in SPOG has also uh, done the uh, Drive Green program. Uh, the Caroline Noy study is one of the issues, one of the things that we've had. We work very hard with industry as a community to resolve the issues and over a two year period we we lowered the uh, the extreme noise levels down below the uh, a load limit. Um, we've really tried to develop the, the skills within the community and offering courses and activities to people within the community and not people that are, are really always involved in SPOG but people who are in the community and, uh, and contribute to the community. The cattle study, we, uh, we took that work and, uh, and actually quite frankly influenced the government to do a broader study, the Western Canada study. It was validated by all the greatest technical minds in North America and uh, it uh, certainly paved the way to understand <clears throat> the whole coexisting of agriculture and oil and gas. Um, we also developed a new development committee which basically we asked that industry uh, consider three things for the community. If it affects a local person negatively as far as vision is concerned as far as odor is concerned or noise those people should be made aware of, of what's happening. This committee that we were working with asked us if uh, we could uh, have a 1-800 number for the area so that if someone saw or heard or smelled something that they didn't know what it was that they could just call a 1-800 number and uh, we would have a process to get the companies out to investigate. And the resident visit program where we have uh, land agent students from Olds College do the uh, emergency response annual resident visits so that people aren't visited by uh, several different companies and share that information between all of the companies. The other piece that was pretty exciting for me is emergency response. Um, emergency response from a point of view of integration. Um, we, it wasn't just an oil and gas <clears throat> kind of thing we should be, be worrying about uh, ensuring that the people are protected. It really was about floods, it was about fires, it's about tornadoes and these major events, and there, there's several that we can be hit with in our community, 
that are fundamentally important and should be important to all of us as residents of this community. It isn't an industry specific thing. <clears throat> so we, uh, we took the, we, we worked hard with the MDs and the towns and, and, and the EUB and, and we're pretty lucky in this region. Um, with the, the SPOG model we've been able to, those relationships are really solidified. And then we can now work together and say, well it isn't your problem, it's our problem. And when we use our problem, we respond in a totally different way and uh, in an integrated way. And, and at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's our residents then that uh, we get to meet their needs early on in any kind of event to, uh, to make sure that uh, we know where they are and, and uh, what kind of help they need, <clears throat> whether it be fire, whether it be flood, whether it be tornado, whether it be an oil gas event. So that has really been an exciting project and we're moving towards standardizing that in Alberta. My vision for the future of SPOG is to continue to be a vibrant part of the community, but to be more connected to the various groups within the communities. SPOG can take a, a lead role, um, maybe a little more provincial than they are, continue to uh, promote some of the more, uh, like I say, uh, provincial issues out there. I think we've matured to a point where we have to be more um, community-minded and that there's a lot more urban type people living out in the rural areas and uh, I don't think we know each other as well as we should. The challenge that, that, that SPOG has going forward is to recognize, never take the, this relationship for granted. So um, understanding what's different and then you know moving in, in the direction of that vision by shifting our goals and objectives uh, that clearly has to be the, uh, the continued renewal of SPOG. Things continue to change, they change in the industry, the uh, new technologies that happen, uh, some fields dry up, some new fields are found, that, uh, that we have to always stay current with what's going on and responsive to what those information needs are of the community. I, I really think that, that SPOG itself has to keep moving ahead and developing itself to the needs of the community. We have a cumulative effect of people. It's not just oil and gas. It's not just the industry. It's, it's not just tourism. But we have, the big thing is the cumulative effect, the biggest cumulative effect we have is people. And that means a changing community. And I think it's important that we, through SPOG, work with this changing community and informing them and keeping them safe. Hi, I'm Tom Snowden, the chair of SPOG. SPOG's been in existence for 15 years and it has had many great successes. It's a model for the province for synergy groups for both being effective and efficient and delivering to its stakeholders. However, SPOG is on a journey and it was time to determine the next destination. Where do we want to go and how do we get there? Therefore, we held a World Cafe workshop where we had stakeholders representing all parts of our community. From this workshop, we came up with nine key areas of action for the next five years. These areas were new blood. How do we increase our active volunteers and members? The second area was value what we have and what we do well. Remain efficient and effective. The third goal was promote the SPOG model for other industries. The fourth one was expand our emergency response to be more regional and able to respond to natural disasters. The fifth focus area was become environmentally friendly as possible. More focus on water and reclamation as, a, as an example. The sixth area was marketing what we do well. The seventh was continuing to educate the community which includes industry. The eighth area was potentially expanding the SPOG vision to reflect more community involvement or involvement of other industries in SPOG. And the ninth area was how do we get greater involvement and commitment from our current members? How do we spread the workload? Besides these goals, we developed a list of 50 strategies that will help achieve these goals. The next step is for the SPOG Board of Directors to take a look at these goals and take a look at the strategies and work out exactly which ones are we, are we going to do. This is our future. It will help us remain vibrant and relevant to our community and to our industry. So please join us on our journey, volunteer, 
be a part of the Spog Vision and have some fun with us. Thanks.